Just remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, he uh, he would eat onion raw. He would just eat an onion like an apple. And so at the service, I talked about how that was meaningful to me because a lot of times in life, it's like he, he comes to me, he says, you just have to eat the onion. You know, like when times are hard, you know, and it's like the onion is both refreshing and very, very hard to swallow, just like life. You know, what you, if you work hard and you do things that you don't want to, it could be refreshing and good for you. But at the moment, it's not always very pleasant and it can be very hard to swallow it. And you have to eat the whole onion. You can't just eat part of the onion. You have to eat the whole dang onion, man. That's the thing. <laughs> you have to face it. And uh, that, was, that was meaningful to me as well. He used to do that. And his, men his mental fortitude as well, with the fact that he worked for NASA and built space rockets, was very impressive to me. And that challenges, you know. So I talked about how, Nietzsche, according to Nietzsche, uh, and a little bit Jordan Peterson too, that beauty is uh, both enticing and intimidating, right? Like when you look at something very, very beautiful, it's very intimidating. If you, especially if you go like you've ever been to one of those very bit, beautiful big cathedrals or synagogues, like you look and you're like, wow, that's it, it's, it's it's really beautiful, really cool looking, you know? Or if you're in the face of a really beautiful woman, right? A very beautiful woman, a very beautiful person. You know, it's almost intimidating, like, wow, like this person's very, you know, like, very powerful or very, there's something about it just kind of like, like it intimidates you. Uh, but it's also enticing, right? Like it also entices you. It kind of calls you to itself because it's like uh, you can be, it's almost like, you know, it's calling you that you. this is what you can be or this is, you know, you can be beyond this. So this is the kind of the level that you can attain in life or more. Uh, like it's calling you to something higher or something like that. So I talked yeah. a little bit about that and i talked about how his life was kind of beautiful to me in that sense where um it intimidates me because of who he was but it also is very enticing and you know gives me a goal yeah you, you gave a speech yeah i did yeah i gave a speech about this yeah nice yep and how, how did you connect it to your grandfather the about the beauty that's what I was trying to say, that I basically was just connecting his life, that uh, talking about these things that he did in life he lived, like his mental fortitude or his physical abilities or uh, his, his ability like to eat the onion too. <laughs> I, I connected how these things are very intimidating, right? They're like very high level. Like you look at it and it's like, wow, he worked for NASA. That's, that's not something that's everyday thing. Or like, man, he can eat a whole onion raw like an apple. That, that's, I tried that. That's very hard. You know, or he was a Marine. He was a very disciplined man. You know, or and he was always he was laughing. I always talk about how he just laughed at everything. Like even he just he, no, nothing faced him. Like he was just no, nothing got to it. He was always happy. He was always laughing at everything. And there's something about that that's like intimidating, right? It's like that's man, that's something powerful and something like I, I look at it like that's it, it almost it almost judges me, right? It almost judges me like wow, like I could be much I could be a much better person than I am. Like I want to be more like that. And that's why I also talk about how not it only it was his life intimidating in terms of beauty, but also uh, enticing because it's like you want to, there's something that calls you to that when you see that beauty or that. It's like you, you want to you want to improve yourself. You want to become closer to that image somehow. And so uh, I, I talked about that in terms of how beauty is, yeah, intimidating and also enticing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. So it was good. good. Happy to you know, I was able to. In, a, in Arabic, you said about the onion, and it's also in uh, we said in Hebrew also, but it's in Arabic. Yom asal or yom basal? Yom asal or yom basal? Really, you asal say that you, is, uh, you have to eat the onion? No, they don't have to eat. But they say one day is is the uh, onion, one day is honey. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. That's cool. Right? That's a good connection. I yeah. like that. Wow, I didn't even know. See, my my brain is just already working on the Hebrew mindset, man, and the Hebrew Arabic. I'm just, it's it's, just, it's all subconscious. It's <laughs> yeah. One day the onion, one day the honey. So, so your grandfather, he has he had some uh, method or, or how to overcome stress and always be happy, or it was natural. It came to natural. I'm sure. It, you know, it took time for him to develop his character. But by the time I knew him, you know, he was already an old guy. He, you know, he's 70. Well, he was like 70 when I was born, you know, and he died when he was 90, 90. 
something. So, I mean, he already had a long life. Um, I think the Marines, being the Marines, disciplined him. I think being for a big Southern family, you know, talking to work hard. Uh, Southern America, USA, it's a big family, working hard, farm and stuff. And also, um, probably just life and things that happened to him taught him just to be happy and realize that, uh, you know, you, you can laugh at the absurdity of life. You can laugh when things don't seem to make sense when you want them to. And and I think, I think he just learned from, from all that and his experiences there. He also tried to support his family. So he was very entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneurial. He tried a lot of different things in life and did a lot of adventures. And those probably shaped him a lot as well. Uh, he probably learned a lot from that. So he had some uh, uh, business? Yeah, 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 he had some businesses. He did a lot of different stuff. So one of his businesses was a gas station. He had a Tesco, it was a te te Texco, Texco uh, gas station. Uh, and some other ones, I believe, I can't remember, but he was always working. He was always trying to find ways to provide for his family. And I also respect that he was always learning because I think what, what was it like he went to college and he played he played American football and call college football when he was uh you know my age or something <laughs> maybe a little younger uh and then and he when he was way older like he was still learning like he was I think when he was like 75 or 80 he went back to college and got like a degree another degree or a certificate in like um in gardening like how to grow plants like and be a gardener kind of person and he was always learning you know and he, he was really sharp his mind was really sharp until he was until he died man he was just a really sharp guy and that's something you, you know like you don't, you don't it's intimidating right it's like man like 97 years old he's sharp you know he's healthy like that's it that's that's really enticing but also very like it's a big thing it's a lot of power there a lot of it kind of judges you like man like is my life like that you know am i going to be able to do that so <laughs> so yeah it's, it's a lot of encouragement and he's a good model in that sense a lot of a lot of things yeah, he was, he was really good at cribbage too. Playing it's like a board game that I don't know how to describe it, but it's like <laughs> he played that a lot too, and he was pretty good at that. So. <laughs> he was very sociable. Everybody loved him. He was always the you know a hot spot of the social life. He was your father's father. That's right, my grandfather. Yeah. yeah. That's nice, and you have some. Uh model is, is so close to you to, to look up to yeah that's why i'm going to carry this for a while hopefully to this will be this will be the token <laughs> everything that i said to you Johan, right now is right here it's, this is the token for for everything i just said <laughs> that's great that's the reason that we now say odd yeah odd s3 uh, what is it? My odd, a stream ve, ve tesha. What do you say? Yeah, one hundred twenty-nine. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. It's because he's such an old guy, right? Just, you don't say one. You don't say until one twenty more. Man. Yeah, yeah. stream is is not longer enough. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, because it used it used to be one hundred and twenty. Of course, that's the traditional. But now it's I it's wish stay longer now. Thirty-eight. <laughs> So one hundred thirty-eight. That's what you say, right? And so one hundred thirty-eight. You know that that uh, uh, seven is more, more funny than eight. How do you say uh, not uh, per, per per numbers? Uh one more time. So say one one more time. Eight is a is a per number, oh. and seven is. Yeah, yeah. So in English, so in Hung it's interesting because in Hungarian they also say parosh, like for for even. In English we say even. Uh, even numbers is like two, four, six, eight, and it, uh, you say odd for like one, three, five, seven. Yeah. Odd numbers. Yeah. You know that in 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 in, in a comedy, odd num numbers are more funny than even numbers. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yep. Because most most comedy uh, traditional comedy punchlines come in threes. Most of the time, it's three, threes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because two is enough to establish a pattern, and then three is enough to break the pattern. All right. So that's why yeah. that works. Or five, five also works if it's a longer pattern. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. That's well said. Very, very interesting. I like that.
So he was 97, so that's why, because his life was a, a big, nice, fun comedy, you know? <laughs> Full of all so kinds of good stuff. Any, any of his secrets? That's what I was those things that I told you, I think, those are goals, his secrets. Well, how he got to those things, I guess, I'm not sure. I think it had to do with his environment and his fortitude, but I think the idea of, of trying to realize that you have to, when you, when the days give you the onion, you have to eat the whole onion, and that's the way you go forward in life. You know, that was something he did, both physically, because he ate, he ate whole onions, and also metaphorically. Uh, I think also something to reach for is to try to keep on going, thinking as much much as you can because he was a very smart guy and worked for NASA and everything and try to shoot higher and higher and and uh, uh, so these are my goals how we how we reached them unfortunately I never got to, to talk to him about that but you, you know what I do know one thing I, I do know one thing you know him laughing at things no matter what he, nothing nothing moved him he was very stoic in that sense right like he was never he was always laughing like because nothing, what, what nothing, do you nothing think moved him of the three Three most important things to do if you want to get uh, to this age like him. I was going to tell you that actually there is one thing I know what he did. And it's the thing that, same thing that, that I do. I'm going to start with one then we'll go from there. And this is, this is truthful. I'm not making this up. This, this, is, this, is, one. this, I, this is what I, I do too. And, and it's helped me a lot. It's actually to, he studied the Tanakh. He, he studied the Bible every single day. And he, he wasn't, he wasn't really Christian. He didn't go, he didn't go to church. He wasn't religious really. Uh, but he studied, he studied the Bible and he tried to live it. Even though, so in one sense he kind of was religious, but he didn't really go to, he was very private with his religion. You know, he didn't really talk about it with anybody. Uh, but he, you know, there's some things from the Tehillim, you know, the Tehillim, the Psalms, the Tehillim, uh, that he read, he read over and over again. I, I was reading. Uh, he has his Bible, and you know, and he would underline, and he, and it was was, was things about like to not let anything move you in life, and to be calm and peaceful, and even when you walk through the, the shadow of the valley of death. And so those things really moved him. I think uh, the wisdom of of like the Talim and and the Tanakh and the, the, the Christian Bible too. And uh, so honestly, yeah, that was a huge thing for him. Uh, and the other thing was, I think because he saw war so the other the second thing was that he saw hard times in life and when people see very hard times in life you either die or you get stronger you either die or you find a way to survive and you know he was he went through a lot of crazy stuff because world war he was in world war ii bro he was in world war ii uh oh. and he sur- and he survived he's an old guy he survived and i think that that so basically don't don't try to avoid hard times you know if you don't you need you try to go towards hard times voluntarily, like be able to voluntarily be able to face the things that you need to face in life and instead of avoiding them because they're going to c- catch up to you eventually. So you have to face the hard things in life and, and find a way to uh, find perspective in a way to, to live through it and overcome it. Um, not like you should try to make your life hard, but, you know, it's like life is just hard just naturally, you know, for in different ways for different people. So I think that was number two. That's a big thing as well that he did. And also number three thing that he did, I think this is the final thing, at least for now, is that he always surrounded himself with people. He was always a community guy. He never tried to, you know, he, he wasn't a loner that stayed away from everybody. He was always talking with pe- people, always interacting with people, always trying to have fun uh, in life and make other people laugh too. You know, I remember actually one time I lost a, he was the most chill guy. You could say anything to him. He was the most chill guy. I, I, he gave me an Indian penny, which is like a really valuable, really expensive, really old penny from America that was like, it's really valuable thing, an Indian penny. And when I was like eight years old or something, and I and I lost it. And then he's like, oh, how about the Indian penny? And, I, and, he's, and I'm like, you know, and he's like, oh, did you lose it? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, Haha, I thought so. And then that's all he said. And he just started laughing. And he's like, ah. But that thing was valuable, and he only had like two, and he didn't even he didn't even let it affect him, right? It's like he was just so he was so stable of a character, right? He's a very stable man, and that's why I'm saying. So, so I think part of that had to do with the, the fact that he he read the Tanakh and Torah. It, it influenced him. He went through hard times in, in the war and found a way to get through it. And he was a community man that learned how to interact with others well and realized what was really important in life. So being able to reflect, that maybe that's number three, you know, also being able to reflect with, well, maybe number four, being able to reflect on what's really important on in life uh, and be able to know what, what's worth getting moved about and what's, what's not, you know. And uh, I think he had a good, 
Jordan, big surprises. Jordan, so. Jordan, you go. Yeah, we're gonna go pretty soon. But it was a good talk to you, Fennin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This, this so, uh, make your rest in peace. And uh, uh, we'll do whatever we can to 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 uh, get to this age and more. And uh, and, and the, not just the quantity of days, the quality of life. Sharp, was what was it? That's why. It's, that's why it's beautiful. That's why. It's yeah. It's intimidating and also enticing. Not only did he live a long time, but he lived a long time in a good life. And that's those are two things. You don't want to just live long. You also want to live well. He did both. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. Johan, okay. We talk. Again, this is a good. This is a good one. We had a lot of good uh, points in discussion here. A memorial to your grandfather. A memorial to the grandfather of us. Yeah. Nice. His life okay. will live on. All right, my friend. See you tomorrow. Take it easy. We will talk again. All right. <laughs>